taught the sun where to stand in the morning. Who taught the ocean you can only go this far? Who taught the moon where to hide till evening? Whose voice alone could catch a fallen star? Well, I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. Let all creation testify let this life within me cry I know my Redeemer lives Hallelujah that very same God who spins things in orbit he runs to the weary, the worn and the weak. Those same gentle hands that hold me when I'm broken. They conquered death and gave me victory. creation testify let this life within me cry I know my redeemer he lives to take away my shame yes he precious life he gave and now he's alive and there's an empty grave hallelujah now I know my redeemer lives hallelujah now I know my redeemer Testify, let this life within me cry. I know my Redeemer. I know, yes, I know. I know my Redeemer. He Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, at the Bible study. And as I was walking in, Pastor Bob was teaching on, as a Christian, we don't have to fear death. And as I sat back there, it just so happens it was also uh, four years and seven months since LJ has been with the Lord. So by just hearing what Pastor Bob was teaching on, it just stirred my spirit even the more. But not only that, you have been praying for a young lady. Her name is Miss Wilhelmina Rump. And she went to be with the Lord on July the 20, 
9th, okay? And it just so happens that when Pastor Bob shared those scriptures at the Bible study, I had the opportunity to go and visit her on Thursday. And when my mom and I got to the hospital, they had her in observation. And as we got there, they were taking her from observation to her room. So we waited until they had taken her out of the bed and had her ready so we can go in to see her. And I've heard statements made about being racked with pain, so much pain that it's just so unbearable. And I literally saw this sister and how she was in so much excruciating pain, and I felt it. And I heard one of the family members saying, please get the nurse so they can go ahead and give her some more morphine. But I went over to her bedside, and all I can do is just begin to rub her head and just rub her head. But those scriptures that that Pastor Bob spoke on, I began just reciting those scriptures to her. And when I recited those scriptures to her, it's like I had to stop because then she started reciting scriptures. She was reciting Psalm 23. And I'm not one for singing, but I just began, just began singing a song, and then she began singing. And she just began saying, holy, holy, holy. And it just made me think about how those angels just rejoicing about the Lord thy God. And I don't know if this was just her transitioning um, about to take place, but one thing for sure, whatever was on the inside of her before she got that morphine, the Spirit of God, the Word of God had taken root and it was just calming her down. And I literally saw this with my eyes. And that's just the power of God. Well, on yesterday, they had the homegoing service for Miss Mina. And my mom, this was her, yes, her best friend, okay? And my mom gets really emotional. And as we were walking in along with the family, um, I could tell, and I really, and I want you to be, be praying for my mom because I think it's anxiety that um, when she gets a little bit too emotional to the point that she kind of faints in and out. But nonetheless, as we walked, and as we got closer to the casket, I could tell my mom was, it was starting, and to the point that she did not want to go to see her that way. And I said, well, that's fine. I said, well, we're going to go ahead and we'll step over here. And um, she fainted in and out, and we went ahead and we put her in the back. And I thank God for the word that as I began to just pray for my mother, she just calm, just calm down. And to God be the glory. But because I was on the, they wanted me to give the remarks, I went ahead and I told my dad, as soon as I give the remarks, then we can go ahead and we take my mom home. But Pastor Bob and Miss Susan, you know how much I love you. I thank you. You are just jewels. And yes, I shared that scripture. 1 John 5 and 13. And I want you to know, as I looked out in the audience, I, I know that they received that because Miss Mina, she knows where she is. We know where she is. I know that she's in heaven. And that's that, what we have as far as, as, a, as a believer to know that we have eternal life with God. We have eternal life as a believer. So upon taking my mom home, very same week, Ms. Mina passed on the 28th, one of Larry's, his dear friend, wife's mother also passed. And she was 85 years old. And again, she was a, was a believer. So can you believe going to two funerals? But these were home-going services, OK? They were rejoicing because a saint has gone on to be with the Lord. And that was just powerful. And I got home at noon. This funeral was at 1 o'clock. And I said, well, I'll go ahead and I'll go with you also. And I just want you to know because that Friday night, because I know that they were going to funeralize Miss Meaner on, on, on Saturday, I said, well, I'll go ahead and go to this wait because I won't be able to go to the funeral. And even at the wait, we were having pre-church, okay? So when I got there and we sat, and everything was just so beautiful, so beautiful.
beautiful. When you just to hear of what this 85-year-old went through and her faith in God. And one of her children got up, or should I say the grandson got up, and he was just sharing about his grandmother. And even though she had Alzheimer's, it didn't make any difference because of the Jesus that was on the inside of her. She knew how to still call on the Lord of Lords. And that was a blessing to hear. And not only that, what really, towards the end when everything was about to be over, the director said, please let me share this with you and family. I hope you don't mind. But he had gotten a phone call that Saturday morning about 11 o'clock. And her service was at 1. And it was a lady saying, I need a flower. And he said, um, well, ma'am, this is the funeral home. Well, I need a flower. And she said, he said, well, who do you need the flower for? Just so happens it was for, and her name is Miss Jones. So he said to her, he said, well, can you contact the family? She said, well, I am the family. And so he told her, well, what I will do, he asked where she lived. And she told him where she lived. He said, well, I will go ahead and I will call someone who lives downtown to be able to help you. So he hung up the phone. He made the phone call. And I want you to know, and I saw when the wheelchair came in, didn't pay it any mind, but that same woman who called the director, someone that's the woman who went ahead and called her to make sure she got that flower, here she comes, pushing her in, sitting right in the front. That woman was 97 years old. 97 years old, and that was her first niece, 85 years old. And I, it just blessed me. It just blessed me just to hear her give that testimony. But the most important thing is, is when we die in Christ, and Pastor Bob, if I had closed my eyes at that second funeral, I would have thought you were up there because he too was speaking on as Christians, we don't have to fear death. So I just want to say that. Amen. Did I clear everybody? Is everybody clear? Everybody's clear. Okay. Put 1 John 5, 13 up there. 1 John 5, 13. The Bible says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. My people fear many times for the lack of knowledge, the right knowledge, the knowledge of God. Because the knowledge of God can clear a lot of doubt, a lot of fears out of our hearts and our minds. I write this to you who believe. Who's that? That's us. We believe. You believe. You're a believer. I heave to, trust in, rely on the name of the Son of God in the peculiar service, services and blessings conferred by him on men so that you may know with settled and absolute knowledge that you already have life. Yes, eternal life. Right now, you got eternal life. If you're a believer, if you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior. Now that tells me if you've got eternal life, you will never die. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Death has been nullified. 1 Timothy 1.10. It may be second. I think it's 2 Timothy 1.10. 2 Timothy 1.10. So we got that settled. Charles, you got eternal life. You preached on that one. I remember. I was listening. <laughs> Son, you got eternal life. Huh? Yeah, because you trust in Jesus. It is that purpose and grace which he now has made known and has fully disclosed and made real to us. Real to us. Is it real to us? Through the appeared of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who annulled death. Who annulled death death. See, this salvation is just much more than just having, <coughs> excuse me, our sins forgiven. Thank God that sin has been dealt with. 
Amen. Sin has been dealt with. We died to sin. Okay? A lot of times people think that when they're tempted, they're sinning. Temptation is not a sin. If you think that you have sinned every time you're tempted, man, you're walking around sin conscious. Burp. Oop, I just sinned. No, I didn't. A burp ain't a sin. It's not appropriate for the moment because I'm in church. But it's not a sin. Has anybody ever burped in church? <laughs> Look at Miss Hattie looking at me. <laughs> oh, Miss Hattie. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a sin. See, if you think everything is sin, you're going to walk around condemned. God has set us free from the power of sin. Okay? Now look what it says. And made it of no effect. And made it of no effect. What? Sin. Has no effect. <clears throat> Let's see. Charles, I hate to pick on you all the time. <laughs> now you'll have your chance when you get up here. <laughs> all right. This, this is my body, and I'm me. I'm Bob Tilt, but this is my body. And my body stops... Br Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. <laughs> We're just going to have a fun day, aren't we? We're just going to have a fun day. Okay. All right, my body. See my body over here? That ain't me. Hello, this is me. That's my body. This is me. All right, it stops breathing. Just lay down on the floor. All the way down, like just like, yeah, he's laying down. Now, now let's see. Uh, uh, who can I pick on? David, you want to come up here? Huh? David? All right. All right, all, we're, we're all up here. Oh, look at Bob. He looks so good. Now, wait a minute. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Where, where am I at? Hey, where? I see I'm, I'm up here in heaven. And you're all talking about, oh, he looks so good. I mean, look at him. Who put that wig on him? Boy, he looks great. Man, he looks so good. Hey, I'm up here with Jesus. What are you giving him all the compliments? I'm Bob. That's my body. Hello? Are you out there? See, we got to reprogram our mind and get it renewed that ain't me. That's just the body I lived in while I was down here. But I can't use it up here because it's not equipped for heaven. So we're going to put him in the ground. Now he looks better, doesn't he? <clears throat> well, we got rid of that one. But I'm up here. All right. Everybody put, um, well, let's finish that. You can leave there and rest a while. I think you're pretty comfortable. <laughs> All right. Look at this. <laughs> Can you, no, I'm up here in heaven. I'm up here. Annulled death and made it of no effect and brought life and immortality and immunity from eternal death to light through the gospel. So it's through the gospel, the light of the gospel, the, the message of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation through Christ. We know that we're saved by what he did for us. The body, this body, he don't need, I don't need that body no more. Susan, the body was pretty good while I was on the earth, wasn't it? <laughs> Charles, you... <laughs> no, well, that is a compliment on the body. If I'm not careful, I could get into trouble. Okay. All right, y'all, you better get up there. All right, how many of you know I'm in heaven? Don't cry for me. I, I don't want that body up here messing me up. Hello? I'm going to get a brand new body. All right. Philippians chapter what? Philippians chapter 3, verse 21. Philippians chapter 3, verse 21. <clears throat> Who will transform? Now, who will transform and fashion anew the body of our humiliation? How many of you know we have this body of just, well, it's 
sometimes it embarrasses us, to conform to and be like the body of his glory and majesty by exerting that power which enabled him even to subject everything to himself. So God's going to transform when he comes back at the rapture. The body will come out of the ground as a resurrected body. And it'll be just like his body when he was resurrected from the grave. I love that because he could pass through the door, pass into, uh, he could appear and disappear. Boy, wouldn't that be great, huh? I'd just like to show up sometimes at your house like a fly on the wall. Nobody's ever thought of that one. <laughs> but see, we got to come out of this mentality and realize that this little time down here is but a short time. Most of you guys' time is run out down here. Isn't that right? No. <laughs> I hate to tell you. Oh, I just don't want to... Oh, I don't want to die. You're not going to die. You have eternal life. Yeah. Say, I'm not going to die. Yeah. Here's what Jesus said in John. <clears throat> he that believeth in me shall never die. These things have been written that you might know that you have eternal life. Death has been nullified. O oh, grave, where is thy victory? O oh, death, where is thy sting? What is Paul talking about? There's no sting in death. You just go to sleep. I've been with people that have drawn their last breath. Absolutely. My uncle, my mother, other people that just so peaceful. Just Actually, my uncle, I actually sense in the spirit when his spirit came out of his body. This came right out of his body. I knew that. He'd stop breathing. Must have been <coughs> 10 seconds after that, I could sense his spirit leaving him. Folks, this is a good gospel. No wonder the Hebrew writer says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? So we have eternal life, and we will have a new glorified body. Now, I want you to turn to... Uh, <coughs> 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. <clears throat> now, this is Paul talking. He says, now also we would not have you ignorant. Now, who is he talking to? He's talking to Christians. He doesn't want us to be ignorant about some things. Well, what are they, Paul? Brethren, sistern about those who fall asleep, who fall asleep. Here Paul calls death, what? Fall asleep. Just fall asleep. Quit snoring. No, you're falling asleep. You're not breathing no more, so you can't snore. So you fall asleep in death. What's so horrible about that? <laughs> now, let's go on with this. <sighs> that you may not grieve for them. Now, we know that we're all still in these natural bodies, and I'm sure that when... Uh, and I've experienced my dad and my mom, my cousins, my uncles, my aunts, my neighbors, my friends, a lot of the sheep of God that I've known for years that have fallen asleep. There was actually a little grieving. But on the other side of the corn, you lucky fool. <laughs> How'd you get out of here so quick? <laughs> you can smile at me. It's okay. I'm trying to... Knock out all the fears 
You don't have to fear death. See, you'll never die. See, I'll never die. That's what the scripture says. You already died with Christ on the cross. You can't die twice. <laughs> Look what it says. That you may not grieve for them as the rest do. Who's the rest? Who's the rest? Huh? What? The none saved, the unbelievers. The none believers, those that don't have Christ. See, Christ is life. He's eternal. He lives in us. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We don't have to grieve like the rest do who have no hope. They have no hope of eternal life with God. They have no hope. They will grieve beyond the grave. Beyond the grave. Hmm. Beyond the grave. What does that say to you? Dave, what does that say to you? Beyond the grave. The hmm. Anybody want to answer that? There's the grave, and something is beyond the grave. What is beyond the grave? Their spirit. They're not saved. They're not in the grave. They're beyond the grave in hell. Whew. So, when Susan passes on, or I pass on, I expect her to grieve, you know, a couple hours. Free at last, free at last, da 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 <laughs> Oh, my children, my children, my children, I know you think I'm crazy, but that's okay, I'm crazy for Jesus. But if you can see the glory, if you can see the majesty of God, when you can compare this old world to that world up there, I'm ready to go right now. This preacher was preaching <clears throat> to these young people. And he said to them, how many would like to go to heaven? Everybody raised their hand but one little boy. So the preacher, hmm. So after the uh, meeting, he come up to the young boy and said, son, uh, I noticed you didn't raise your hand when I asked how many wanted to go to heaven. And uh, he said, oh, I do. I said, and the preacher said, well, why didn't you raise your hand? He said, oh, I thought you were taking up a busload right now. <laughs> yeah, we all want to go to heaven right now. I mean, I'm hungry now. I think Susan's got something over there. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. We've got to see what Jesus has done. In its fullness. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? It's a great salvation. And yet the devil has just fooled so many people. Like, well, God's after me. Yes, he is. He's after you to save you. If we can see the glory. Oh, this will be the last verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, 17, 16, about uh, 17, I think it is. Of course, you go on with that in Thessalonians. It talks about the resurrection. You know that. Now, notice this. Are you ready? For our light momentary affliction, this slight distress of the passing hour. You know what that passing hour is? Hmm? That, this little time we spend down here. Hello? This little bit of time, Paul calls it a, a passing hour. And we hold on to that little passing hour like, no, no, we got eternity. I know I'm treading in tall grass here. How many see, can see that in the spirit? Let's see. Can you see what I just said? Passing hour. How many can see it? How many sees it? Oh, that's good. You're, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you see it. See, I want you to see that. Why hold on to a passing hour when you have trillions of hours in eternity with a glorified body and you don't have to pay no taxes? How did I get me a dance? 
See? All right. He calls it a slight distress. Slight distress. Raising the kids, Rachel. Just a slight distress. <laughs> just, a, just a slight distress. <clears throat> a passion is ever more and more abundantly. Now, it is ever more. Now, what is ever? I mean, what is he? All right. Is ever more and more abundantly prepare, preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory. An ever. Weight of glory beyond all measure, exceedingly surpassing all comparison and all calculation, a vast and transition glory, blessedness never to cease. Got one person happy over there. Y'all just want to hold on to this passing hour, don't you? Well, we don't want the devil to take us out before our time. Don't get me wrong. You know, I might preach it along that line. But I'm trying to get you to see beyond this moment, beyond this little passing hour, beyond this little thing down here that we think is so... These kingdoms that a lot of people are building down here. Hate to tell you, you're going to leave it all. But if you want to leave it for anybody, my name is Robert Tilton. Yeah, you can leave it to me. I know what to do with it. I'll give it to Charles. He knows what to do with it. Rachel knows what to do with it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Woo! Go to the next verse. Blessed is never to cease. 18. <clears throat> 4, 18. Thank you. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen... But to the things that are unseen, which we had just talked about. <coughs> For the things that are visible and temporal. Notice they're temporal. The things that we see, they're, they're all temporal. Brief and fleeing. It's just brief, just fleeing. I can remember when I was born. Eighty-one years ago. My daddy said, you know, when you were born, the wind was blowing. It was a cold March day. I'll never forget it. I said to my mother, cover me up, I'm getting cold. <laughs> he said it was a cold day in March. Aren't you glad that you didn't remember when you were born? Huh? But we all remember when our kids were born, weren't we? You remember that? I remember when Susan brought our first little girl home. She was a mess. She was wrinkled, oh, just wrinkled. I mean, I've never seen so many wrinkles on one child in my life. David, I'm telling you, she was wrinkled. There was nothing to take away those wrinkles either. I said to Susan, I said, honey, how are we going to get rid of those wrinkles? Feed her popcorn, chicken. She'll fatten up. Oh, boy, believe me, has the wrinkles left my daughter, my oldest daughter. I can't find a wrinkle on her now. <laughs> look, look, a visible temporal, they're brief, clean, but the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. Time to shut up, isn't it? I hope that uh, you'll draw from what I've said this morning to readjust your thinking this ain't my home. I'm just passing by. So if you want to look at me and see me, this passing hour is going fast. And here I am and there I go. There he is, but he's gone. So long, so long. I'm going to my home in heaven and the lord has gone before me to prepare a place for me that where i am he said you'll be also bob don't get too grounded and rooted down here 
For this is not your home, my child. You're only passing through to tell others about Jesus. He that has the Son has life. He that has the Son has life forevermore. For Christ came to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. So if you want to hang around down here, eating hearty burgers be my gifts. I'm heading to the pie in the sky. God bless you. Have a good afternoon. How many, where are we at now? Are we up a little higher? A little higher? Okay.